which means we used to have a paid for mooring. We used to pay the CRT per month for the privilege of having a pontoon in our case and um, some electricity. We'd also pay for the electricity on top of that. Yep. And over a month ago, we decided to stop doing that and to go on the canal full time without a residential mooring. shelf life food that we got was some camembert cheese because we thought what we'll do is we'll bake the camembert and we'll bake some bread and we'll do that in a couple of weeks when we're a little bit less prepared or we've been cruising and it'll be a really lovely treat um, but the camembert even though it has a long expiry date should not be kept in your fridge for a day it was very stinky. Yeah, it was too stinky and all the other food wanted it out and they voted it out of the fridge. We had to eat it, we had to air out the fridge. So, yeah. Long life food is fantastic, just choose the right food. How easy is it to continue a cruise when you're talking about your utilities, like water and power? We've got quite a large water tank that will last us quite a while, even with running the washing machine. We're keeping a tally of how many showers and washing machines and we will let you know in a month or so how long it lasts for us. So we haven't run out yet. Um, we've probably gone about 10 days in between fills, but I don't think we did any clothes washes in that time. And we were having obviously quite quick showers. But we haven't really had any problems with water because we, like I say, we're not in London where the facilities are supposed to, supposed to be a little more scarce. We're planning our trips around the water points. So for example, when we were on at Aylesbury, we were moored at the Tesco, but we knew there was a water point, just one lock on. So we waited at Tesco until we were lower on water, and then we went and filled up and did our turn. Went back to Tesco and did the rem remainder of our two weeks, kind of stint there and that worked quite well for us. As for power, we have two solar panels on the roof but they're quite low wattage. I don't know exactly what wattage they are because we didn't install them and everybody I ask how I can tell how many watts they are just says look at the sticker on the bottom but they're screwed on with rusty screws so I'm not going to do that until we repaint the roof. 
but they're quite low wattage and on a really sunny day when the sun is directly above us we'll probably be able to keep the fridge going most of um, and, and the possibly toilet. possibly the little computer fan on the toilet yeah so obviously when we cruise and when we move that charges the batteries and there's other ways that we can charge the batteries which if we had a generator or if we had a wind turbine but we don't have those things at the moment we are so, saving up so not for a wind turbine <laughs> sorry maybe. to disappoint you i might have quite one but um we're kind of working out the different impacts so what we're actually doing is running the engine for a very short amount of time every day when we're moored up and we can charge our laptops for work that way and we can run the washing machine if we need to and we can um, heat the water at the same time so how easy is it to continue your cruise and work remotely um, because we ruled out doing it land-based uh, I think it's been relatively easy it really has come down to time management and managing how awesome this is because you want to be outside all the time and when you're not outside you want to be inside drinking cups of tea and chatting and looking at things and watching the cats play and watching the swans play you kind of don't want to be working so that's been a bit tricky just self-management wise. How easy is it to continue cruising cats? I'm saying specifically cats because obviously we don't have a dog so I can't comment. But, but without, if you have a dog leave a comment below. Yeah. With our cats we're finding it really easy because we and we'll talk about this probably in a special episode because the cats say that they haven't featured enough in our vlogs lately. But because they're relatively well trained and obedient and very dependent on spending time with us, 95% of the time they do as they're told. So like just now when we were leaving the mooring spot, Munchie was down the towpath and I called to him and I said, come on, come on. And he looked at me and then I turned the engine on. I said, come on, we're leaving. And he came running down the towpath and got on the boat. I think we're extremely lucky with our cats. We're lucky that they know the engine means we're leaving, they should come back to the boat as opposed to the engine means we're leaving, they're going to go hightail it into a field. Yeah. Because we know that does happen to some cat owners. So, don't, so I think it's, we, from the start, we never started the boat with them on the land. We never did that. We always made sure they came in, we closed the door, then we started the boat. So we're kind of just, over the couple of years, we've adjusted that to start now putting the boat on and seeing if they know that means that we're gonna move. So just little bits of training at a time. Yeah, and we don't let them out at night, so we're not worrying about them bringing us presents or about them going missing and getting into trouble during the night. The thing that I didn't consider fully was vets but we've talked to a few other cat owners and they said that pets at home will often take um you can uh, do a drop in at pets at home so whenever we are mooring up we do kind of check the map and make sure we know where the vets are yeah. just in case yeah and they're, they're fully vaccinated and everything so we don't have to unless something happens to them we don't have to worry until end of october and they when we if we do have to leave the boat for more than a night we leave them at a cattery or at my sister-in-law's place so that um, we have timed cat feeders um, and if we have to we'll leave a timed cat feeder and they'll stay on the boat but most of the time we do end up putting them in a cattery or we ask family to look after them just because in winter it's too cold to leave them on the boat even though they have fur and people say they have fur um, and in summer actually it's too, it's too hot to leave them on the boat so you've got to take that commitment on when you purchase pets yeah. so how easy is continual cruising i guess it's kind of as easy as you want to make it it depends on your work situation it depends on your home situation and your solar setup and your power setup 
how much money you have for diesel. Big shout out to our Patreons because they do pay for our diesel. So we never have to worry about diesel. Thank you so much. And our cat treats. <laughs> and cat treats. Actually, cat treats are courtesy of Steve and Andy because we're still using the ones they gave us. Um, so how easy is continual cruising? Like Kaf said at the beginning, we couldn't manage it in London. We just couldn't. Um, we know Jasmine manages it with absolute grace in London. Yeah. And so she's probably the one to ask if you have London questions. But as, as for getting out of London and just continually cruising, the first section for us and, and the first step into the unknown has been really lovely. There are some times when I'm at the locks and I'm like setting the locks and I genuinely cannot believe how lucky I am. I don't miss communal living. Uh, I don't enjoy it. Everybody at the basin was lovely. Big shout out and a hello if you're watching. But um, I love this. I love this so much more. Yeah, it's nice, it's relaxing. We've kind of decompressed quite a lot. I have a lot more decompressing to do. If you've got any questions about continual cruising that we haven't covered in this chat, write them in the comments below because we're going to look at doing a little bit more explaining of some of the things to do with boating in this kind of how-to series. So thanks for watching today and we hope you've enjoyed and it's been useful for you and entertaining. Please and we hope that it inspires you to make the leap to, if not continual cruising, cruising full stop. And if you do and you have Twitter, um, follow us on Twitter and send us your pictures because they're always awesome. Give us a like. Thanks for watching. Bye.